Cameroon's forest cover about 22 million hectares of land, which is almost half of its national territory. Most of this forest area has been permanently allocated to long-term forest production or conservation, with a smaller area intended for community forestry. The forest and biodiversity of Cameroon embody a remarkable portion of the Congo Basin, the world's second largest ecosystem after the Amazon Basin. Cameroon is Africa's largest exporter of tropical hardwood to the European Union. According to the United Nations Programme on Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, just about 3% of Cameroon's forest is left for the communities, 54 for public administration, 41 to businesses and entities. Despite the huge revenue raised by the logging industry, most of these communities remain very poor with most of them living below the poverty line with deplorable social amenities. Well, one would be very quick to say that development is broad. But I think if you, if you look beyond, you would realize that so many of such communities that have such resources do not even have uh, a, a good road that moved into such communities. So these people actually are doing total exploitation because sometimes they come and they, 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 they tell the government that um, they have a very good uh, a CSR, a social responsibility plan. They are going to give roads. They are going to perhaps give the, the, the community a good hospital. But again, when you look into it, you realize that all these facilities that they mention at the beginning of uh, wanting to get their documents for exploitation, when they actually get into the field, you do not see these facilities there. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a hole of exploitation. Boy. My name is Carla Kerber. I am a volunteer from Germany and I present Bread for the World. It's the ICT organization. It's an organization who um, train teacher to um, work without violence, with uh, environment friendly methods. Because I love milk and in Germany I'm used to drink, I don't know, maybe three or four liters a week because I drink every day my coffee with fresh milk and I love milk. I eat yogurt and cheese and at the beginning it was horrible for me in Cameroon because when you go in a supermarket you only see milk powder, there is no cheese and when you can buy cheese it's really expensive. When you want to buy yogurt you're not sure if you can eat it, what is inside. That is a big problem for me. And these milk powder products are mostly from uh, the European Union. So may sometimes from Germany or um, from the Netherlands. And I think that was really crazy for me because I know that in Cameroon there are some cows more than some cows because you see them all over the streets so they give milk and i know that there are farmers in cameroon they produce milk product products so i find out that the european union is subsidized the companies in um, their own countries so they give them money to make the production cheaper for the um, land for the companies to sell it really cheap in Cameroon, so cheap as possible, and the farmers in Cameroon are not able to go down with the price like them. This is blamed on the lack of transparency and corruption, which are reducing the impact of the initiative that channels a portion of national timber levies to rural forest communities. Timber exploitation can be traced as far back as the colonial period, with the colonial masters playing a determining role in the future of the logging industry in Cameroon.
The exploitation of timber started during German colonization, took off after the Second World War, and intensified at the beginning of the 1990s. With the enslaved written norm of a vacant and analyst land, the Germans made the state the principal owner of land and forest resources. This was the beginning of the marginalization of the indigenous people whose customary right to own land and its resources was grabbed by the German state, a practice that would be reinforced after independence. Over time, timber thus became the second most important source of export income after oil. From a conservation perspective, the forest constitutes a crucial reservoir of biodiversity, including many endemic species, and its ability to contribute to climate regulation and other environmental and social services is gradually being compromised by the unsustainable exploitation of wood. I have a lot of worry as regards the biodiversity conservation and uh, protection in Cameroon. Why do I say so? Um, it's because... Um, the biodiversity in itself, first I must note that Cameroon is endowed with a lot of natural resources and um, in this light of biodiversity, a question comes to mind of um, the measures that are put in place to ensure biodiversity, sustainability and I, I want to add the word survivability. Why do I say so? Now, the biodiversity issues in Cameroon, the past that be, who are those who need to ensure that the people who live in such local communities or in the forest areas and who have a first-hand knowledge of what it takes, of what actually prevails in these local communities and have a lot to do in, in its protection and its conservation are not empowered per se, but again, they are not empowered because the powers that be have not given them a lot, do I say knowledge? Not really knowledge again, but um, they have not allowed them to enjoy the facilities that they have because they have enough knowledge in protecting these species. That's what they move for if you want to run, say you see the sky fine. Because some cow, they don't die, it seems to be small. The Cameroonian people should think more about what they do when they drink milk powder of the European Union. Because when they do that, they have this big company to get more and more in their own country of the money and they will not have the farmers, the milk farmers in Cameroon. And there is a big company in Douala, they produce milk products for Cameroon but they get the milk powder for these products from the European Union companies. So it would be um, a big part for, new, um, for farmers to do some new things, to produce their own milk, they can sell it, they can, um, they can feed their whole family with this milk, sell it for a good price. Popular opinion holds that Cameroon is still subject to a system of neocolonialism perpetuated by the former colonial powers, by foreign capital, and by the ruling classes at the national level. Germany, France, and the United Kingdom all played a significant part in the colonial history of the country and remain influential partners on trade and macroeconomic policies. The state is a strategic actor in the management of Cameroonian forest as it owns the forest and defines forestry policies and regulations. The logging and timber processing industry is highly concentrated with more than 80% of national timber exploitation being generated by fewer than 20 large, predominantly European companies. Just as the saying goes that no one can hurt you without your permission, others have contrary views refuting that the fate that has befallen the forest community has anything to do with colonialism, but everything to do with the state. The local communities have not only been ripped off their right to own land, but they have been left to suffer in penury.
I think we must be able to work with our consciences and see that the people who are the forest people who live in, the, in, in, in these zones have a difficulty and that needs to be addressed. And so when we get money and sit quiet and these companies come and they just do work and leave and they have nothing in compensation and they don't pay any rights, any uh, rights to the people and they are destroying the biodiversity and these people leave and have their being in the forest and now their, their, their livelihood is threatened, it becomes a difficulty to them. Heavy trucks involved in the transportation of timber leave most of the roads in a deplorable condition. The very few communities that are lucky to have land sometimes have businesses extorting their timber by paying menial amounts for their logs, paying very cheaply for labor, and other times use organized and structured institutions to bribe and corrupt their way into seizing forest land from the weak and vulnerable. Health, education, and infrastructural facilities in some of these communities are a luxury. The question that comes up is, who is in charge of the local community development? Is it timber exploitation companies through their corporate social responsibility projects who, for the most part, only care about profitability? Or is it tax revenue raised by this industry that is often siphoned and misappropriated by the powers that be? Or is it the United Nations Red Funds that barely reach the communities? Biodiversity conservation is just indispensable and the powers that be need to put in good policies in place and ensure that these policies are working and follow up these companies that are coming in from the west to do to to to, to fell down to cut down the trees and ensure that they are able to follow up with their 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 shared responsibility or you want to call it their corporate social responsibility plan to ensure that they are providing as well as they are taking away and that they pay the 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 the, the, the rights that they pay to these people emit the people and in so doing we would be able to enable the people have their livelihood <laughs> Alda, Guri Jenga, I know Nana, but Pablo. Now, yes, you give us your tucker, the hair go my. The campaign against the import of cheap chicken shows that there is a possibility to fight against cheap imports. The subsidies of the milk export in Europe makes the price of milk products really small. In one year, the price of milk powder decreased from 3 euro 40 to 1 euro 60. It should send a sign to all investors of Cameroon that they shouldn't invest in the local companies. Yuziva, come with me. Aruna, Aruna. <laughs> if the government of Cameroon would stop the cheap import of milk production, the income of the milk farmers in Cameroon could increase from now 200 euros to 500 euros in a short time. So they can sell a little milk much more cheaper than now after, after some time. And it's reported that there is a big market of, um, you, um, of consuming milk in Cameroon. So it's not like that no one in Cameroon wants to drink milk or eat cheese. There is a big market. So we should invest in, uh, in your own milk farmers and not Give the, give the money to companies, they have enough money.